Hey everybody, Nick Maxwell here. Um, this has been a long-awaited video. Uh, we are going to walk you completely 100% through, start to finish, a transmitter setup and a CGY760R setup on the bench that is going to take you from brand new out of the box, servos, gyro, transmitter, all the way to ready to test fly. <laughs> So first step, um, I, I kind of do things in this order. Um, obviously you can do them in multiple different orders. Uh, I tend to attack it with, I start with my servos. Um, so before I even mount them in the helicopter, uh, these in this particular helicopter, this is an XL Power Wraith. Um, all the equipment in this is blank except for the servos and the ESC. I've pre-programmed those um, and I've got the swash plate level. Um, but I'm going to show you how I did that by using the Futaba GPB-1 that comes with the CGY-760R uh, to make sure that all of your servos are all centered and that when you go to uh, program your CGY-760R, you won't even need to worry about uh, setting sub-trims or anything like that. I'm also going to show you how to put these in 760 microsecond neutral pulse width mode. So okay, first things first, um, we're going to plug our servo into our GPB-1. Um, I've got a really long uh, S-Bus cable here just because eventually um, we're going to actually use that to connect to the transmitter. Um, but So go ahead and plug that in. Three different options are going to come up. One is right, um, the next is servo, and the next is start. Um, right is used if you're transferring uh, from settings from one gyro to another. Um, we, we don't want to do that right now. Um, so I would, I would tend to avoid that. Um, your enter or your start is for your CGY760R, so when you plug the GPB-1 into the, the 760, that will happen. And then what we're looking for is servo, and that is the up button, plus button. I'm going to hold that down. Then you're going to see SBUS servo. It's going to ask you to recall. There won't be any data in this until you hit the recall button. So recall. and then hold for one second. And now all of your information is, is loaded. You'll notice that your servo is now powered. And so what we're gonna do is go down to this little button that's available that says select. And you're gonna select DG.760. You're gonna hold it down for one second after you select it. The little bars are gonna go across saying I'm sending data. And there you go. You're going to hear it kind of twitch a little bit. Um, and then under HPS HC700, instead of DG.1500, uh, it's going to show 760. We can scroll down to this next part. Uh, you're going to see your left and right for helicopters. Um, you don't need to worry about that unless you're, you're trying to offset the total tail rotor control throw. Um, I use that real infrequently. Most guys will as well. Most helicopters out there these days, the control geometry, as long as your servo arm is 90 and as long as you're in the middle of the tail pitch slider, uh, it is pretty good. Or I'm sorry, the tail pitch slider is in the middle of the tail shaft. Um, your endpoints aren't going to need skewed too far. Um, so I'm going to go down to degrees, and I have got the servo arm on the servo that I want to use on my helicopter. And as you can see here, it's close, but it's not right. So all I need to do is go to degree, highlight it, and move that, oh, wrong way, move that degree, and it's within increments of uh, a quarter of a degree, so you can get this spot on. I'm going to adjust. There we go. This is now exactly 90 to here. I'm going to hit the enter button to exit that, and then I'm going to scroll back up to write, and write that to the servo. After it says completed, I'm good to go. This servo is ready to be mounted in the helicopter, and then all I will have to do is adjust my swash plate control linkages to make sure that my swash plate is level uh, with these servos 90 degrees. So you do that for all of your servos in the helicopter, throttle, tail rotor, cyclic, everything. Um, set the, I'm going to set this off the side for now because um, these are already done. But um, you would be surprised by just taking that one step and doing that for those four, possibly five, if you've got a nitro, um, 
that that's that quick step uh, if you do that to those servos how much easier it makes setting up the model and also how much better your helicopter is going to fly and the reason why is because that is actually shifting your whole control span rather than just shifting what your neutral is and not changing the endpoints um, so the biggest thing you'll see is on your top to bottom collective um, when you start moving your cyclic around uh, there's going to be a lot less interaction that you're going to have to deal with in the swatch detail menu First things first, um, when you get a brand new gyro out of the box, I want to show you how to check the uh, information on the gyro and what firmware version you have. So I'm going to plug my GPB-1 into the P-Box port. Now you do not want to power the gyro off the P-Box port. You also don't want to power it off of the RPM port, but the Aileron elevator pitch, throttle rudder, elevator 2, and SBUS 2 ports are all open to take up to 8.4 volts, so 2S LiPo power. So I'm gonna plug my Fataba Life battery into the elevator two port, because that one I have open, um, and I have removed my um, BEC power uh, from that port, so that way uh, I'm not back feeding power. Um, so now to enter the, the gyro, I'm gonna hit enter, hold that down, and it's gonna say connecting, and then all this data is going to load your, your gains, uh, your degrees per second. You'll notice as you rotate it around, those will go up. The gain's at zero right now, so it's not showing. Um, essentially, the gyro's off. I'm just going to show your condition, your receiver battery voltage, what swash plate type, uh, how much time is on the gyro. Um, so I actually reset this gyro to default, but uh, this one has had 7 hours and 36 minutes of runtime on it, um, and your RPM. To check the firmware version, you need to hold the two center buttons down until you hear beep, and then it's going to go to GPB1 display. So now display, these are your display settings, sound, that's the beep that's happening here. Um, info that we're going to go there to find that receiver, this is uh, your receiver type. Um, if you want to put on, say you have a, a FHSS transmitter, um, and then also if the internal receiver is active. Uh, that is if you're running an external receiver out here and say using like a Jetty transmitter or something like that, you would change that to inhibit. But we're pairing this to a 16iZ. We're going to have this set up wirelessly. So I'm going to leave it all active, exactly stock, exactly how it is. Um, the only thing that you'll ever need this for after this again is if we do a gyro update. And that's what we're checking for now. So the last option is gyro update. If you have a CU CIU3, you're going to choose high speed. So now though, we're going to go back to info, and my gyro version is on gyro 3.2, which is currently the one out there. And that allows the 16iZ, the, T, the T32MZ, to talk to the CGY um, 760R wirelessly for all of your flight tuning parameters. So we're done here. Going to just exit out. You don't really have to. Um, just for sanity check, I'm going to power cycle. I'm going to unplug this and unplug my GPB-1. Eventually, we're going to use this cord to finish the rest of the setup, but we're going to do it through this. We're not going to touch this again. Okay, so now what we're going to do, and, and like I said, you can, you can actually kind of start to work on some of the different helicopter stuff. This is just the order I like to do it in. I go to the transmitter and I say, okay, I got to build a model program and I start brand new, um, which is what we've got here, and all I've done is I've renamed it. I'm calling this my CGY760R base transmitter mo uh, model. We're gonna go to linkage menu first. The things that we're gonna, we're gonna focus on here is the model type. We want it to be a helicopter and H1 swash. Then we're gonna go to server reverse. Uh, depending on your speed controller, um, you might need a reverse throttle. You need to, to look into the instruction manual uh, of that to see uh, if for Futaba uh, you need to reverse it. In this case, with the Scorpion, I'm going to leave it reversed. Um, eventually, later on, we may need to reverse rudder and we may need to reverse throttle if it's a nitro. Um, you do that in the transmitter, not in the CGY. Uh, Endpoint, leave everything default. Um, eventually, if you need to calibrate your throttle, um, if you have a speed control that does not calibrate by going by powering it up at a high stick and then going to lower stick, um, like a castle, um, then you just adjust those throttle endpoints to what you need to do. Again, you have to refer to your ESC's uh, instruction manual for that. 
Um, servo speed. Um, this is useful if you have a scale helicopter and you have some flaps or where, you know, some scale, something that you're trying to operate. Um, for general 3D helicopter sport flying or even FAI uh, setup, you wouldn't adjust this. Sub trim, make sure everything's at zero. Function, this is where we're going to start doing some work. Um, what you can see here is channels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and they're all going to have assignment, they're all going to have a stick assignment, they're all going to have a trim assignment. Um, this first page, LRN elevator, throttle, rotor, gyro, pitch, we're going to leave default. The next one, this is where we're going to start looking at stuff. If you're using the Fataba internal governor, you're going to leave governor and governor 2. You're going to leave gyro 2. Gyro 2 is your entire rotor head gain. Gyro 3 um, is actually so if you are using, the reason it's left in the transmitter, uh, if you're using another brand of um, gyro, you may need a third axis. Um, we actually don't need it for the 760, so um, I'm going to show you how to, to change that and eliminate it so you don't have to worry about it. Um, what I do is change it and go to, and there's lots of ways to do this. This is what I've just found to be the most efficient, is change it to auxiliary 1. Um, I have actually renamed my auxiliary one to blank in this transmitter, um, but I'm going to show you how to do that in a little bit. But I select that, so it actually shows nothing. My memory is terrible. I forget what's called what, yada, yada, yada. So this is a good way to do this. Um, the next default is a needle valve adjustment. So if you're flying a glow helicopter and you have a servo to adjust your needle valve, obviously we don't. We're going to make that my blank, which is auxiliary one. Channel 11, we don't need it. We don't need all this stuff for the general programming, so I just blank it out. You can, you do have the option, you can just leave it there, it's not gonna do anything. Um, if you see there's control, there's two dashes, which means it's not doing anything. Okay, auxiliary four, I'm gonna change that to my blank one. Same thing with 14, 15. Uh, channel 16, I have set to um, condition right here, which is default, which is what I use for my gyro conditions. Um, I'm actually on this one going to leave that blank. And what I'm going to do is show you how to use the gyro conditions um, tied to a digital channel. Um, there's two ways you can do this. You can either tie it to a digital channel and set it to your idle up, um, or you can use uh, a spare frequency and a in the AFR, move it up and down. Um, so actually, I'll show you how to do it with the, with the AFR. So I'm going to reassign channel 11. That's going to be my condition channel. And so that needs to toggle channel 11 and what switch I put it on. Um, I'm going to make a dual rate later, and so you'll understand that. And we're done. Okay, fail safe, um, this is up to you. Typically um, for throttle, I go in and I set the throttle so it's at 0%. If I do get a fail safe, then my motor cuts off. Um, if the aircraft comes back, um, it will turn back on. In that case, if you know that your motor shuts down, you had a hold, um, shouldn't really have to worry about that in the future. Um, but it is there if you wanna use it. System type. Um, this is something that, that I do want everyone to take note of. Um, you need to be in channel, fastest 18 channel for the CGY760R. Um, so in this case, I have actually not linked um, the transmitter to this gyro. So uh, while we're on this page, I'll go ahead and do it now. Super simple. Hit link. It's going to start making all this noise. I am going to plug my battery in while it's making that noise. Wait a few seconds. Bingo. Link. Everything's going to start trying to move here. Um, and, oh, actually they won't because um, I haven't changed this to 760 yet. But you'll see on your home screen, now all of a sudden you've got your receiver telemetry. So you've got, not only do you have this little um, reception bar that's got three bars, but it also shows 6.1 volts, which is what my battery is currently at. I'm going to go ahead and unplug this for now. Gonna go back to linkage menu, uh, system type, trim setting. Um, this is if you were to ever fly like airplanes or something with a flight control system, you don't need the trims, so you're not gonna worry about that. Throttle cut, that's for a glow helicopter. 
um, what you do is you assign it to whatever switch you want. So a lot of times, a lot of people use the momentary um, set it to that. The cut position is then adjustable. So what you would do is you would use that number to change until the throttle barrel is completely closed, which is usually lower, um, and then activate it, and then you're good to go. Swash ring, uh, this is for swash plate helicopters, or for flybar helicopters. Um, you're not going to use it with um, flybarless systems because it's already in there to prevent any binding. Uh, the only way that you would use this is if you're trying to learn to do pyro flips and the attempt or the, the way that you want to attempt to learn it um, is by allowing this to do your stir if you just go into the corners. I don't recommend that, but some people have found that to work. Um, stick alarm. This is your throttle stick alarm. Some people have, have noted that they would like noise when you're at 50%. Um, so. You can turn that on every time I pass 50%. It's also, you can set that. So to set it, say you want it at 75%, hold that button down, it memorizes it. Now it's 75%. That is pretty useful for helicopters if you want to know where your zero collective is. I'm gonna turn that off just so it doesn't do that the whole rest of this video. Um, your timer, um, so this is pretty self-explanatory, um, but I do get quite a few questions on how to set up a timer. Um, so we're going to start it. We're going to set ours for 30 minutes because we don't want it going off this entire video. Um, this is your, either you can have it set to speech or buzzer um, and then elapsed or remainder. So that's going to count up. Um, one time or constant is when you reach that time. Uh, if it's constant, it is not going to shut off. This thing is going to buzz until you reset the timer. Um, if it is one time, it is going to buzz for a short period of time. I think it might do a little sequence of, of vibrations um, and kind of personal preference. Um, mode, uh, count up or down. So we're going to count down from 30 or count up from zero. Um, the Memory uh, is set to off by default, but if you want your timer to remain from different flights, um, turn that on. Uh, reset switch um, would be if you wanted to reset this to a switch. So again, some guys use the momentary or set to other switches. Your start switch and your stop switch, pretty self-explanatory. Um, when do you want the switch to come on? I know I tend to set it to my idle up. So once I get into a hover and I go to click and idle up, Click in, my timer starts, now I got three minutes of 3D. Uh, stop switch is then throttle hold. Um, and you can assign that to whatever you want. Um, you do have two timers as well. So you can set up two different ones. Um, kind of like your alarm clock, I guess this is kind of your, your first one could be your snooze and this one could be your, your, your second one. Um, okay, function name. This is where we get into what I talked about earlier. Um, so you see, I've already got aux one is set to condition. I've renamed it to condition, which uh, correlates to the conditions in the gyro. That channel aux one is going to toggle what condition or bank or whatever you want to call it um, is operating the gyro. And then aux two, um, I have just put a space, one space in there, um, which makes it completely blank. I'll show you how to do that real quick. Aux three, click rename. And in this case, it's already blank. Let's Call this Futaba There you go. So Aux3 is now named Futaba. I find this extremely useful if you have multiple helicopters, specifically if you have helicopters with different setups um, or different brand gyros or different brand features. Um, say you have a switch glow or say you have a U glow or say you have something to operate that, you could name it that so you know exactly what channel it is. And when you put this thing down, six months later, you come back and you go, oh crap, what, what channel do I have it programmed on? It's a really useful tool. Okay, sensor. Um, this is uh, your telemetry sensors. So right now with the CGY 760R, um, we have our RPM sensor, which is built into this, um, into this RPM port. Uh, and so it is allotted to slide two, which is default. All the rest are blank. If you are using other telemetry sensors, you'll plug it into the back here, into this SBUS port, and you'll hit register, and it will automatically assign it a slot, 
and then when you plug it into your receiver, you're good to go. Okay, page two, telemetry. This is uh, what is showing what you have actively useful. Um, in this case, I have receiver voltage, which is default, and then I have the RPM sensor, which is the CGY760R. Telemetry setting. This is your different logging and speech interval settings. Trainer. This is if you want to do trainer. Um, obviously, you can either hardwire um, or they. if you've got a, a WTR7, you can use that. Um, if you activate it um, and you set it to teacher, um, then you'll need to plug the module into this and then link it to the trainer. Uh, and then if this is the student, um, then depending on how the master is set up, um, you'll either need or you might not need a radio program in this. Um, depends on how they have it set up. Okay, warning setting. These are just your warnings. What buzzer, condition, throttle cut, idle down throttle position if you start it up and down. I've got all my stuff set to buzzer. User menu setting. This will become your best friend because all of the parameters that you need to adjust are there. So just to get going, I'm going to go ahead and throw a couple in there. We're going to throw, let's see here, we're going to throw condition select. We're going to throw AFR in there because we're going to use that for our condition adjust. We're going to throw our pitch curve in there. We're going to throw throttle curve, uh, gyro setting. This is going to be your wireless settings. Then we're going to also put gyro in there, um, which is your gyro gains, your overall gains. Uh, and let's put let's put dual rates in there in case you want to. Change that. Okay, that pretty much covers it. Now instead of scrolling through all those pages, all I have to do is hit this one button, user menu, and they're all right there in front of you in case you ever need to tune it. Um, so that's, that's important to set that up. And then obviously the last parameter is data reset, which after you do this, you don't want to do that. Um, but if you do, if you're selling your transmitter, um, or something like that, or you just want to completely start over, um, you can hit that button. Okay, so now our core here is done. Now we're going to click this thing that says helicopter over here. This is your model menu. Um, this is where all everything happens setup wise and uh, adjustment wise. Um, so you're going to see servo monitor. This is where you can see all your stick movements. Um, you can see 0 to 100. You can see what your endpoints are set to. Condition select. So now, by default, um, there are three idle ups set up in the Fataba. Um, obviously, you may want to use that many. I personally, for 3D, I'm only going to use one. So, idle up three, I'm going to hit remove. Yes, idle up two, remove. And we're going to leave these here. They are pre assigned. So, idle up one is SE. Um, but you want to check to make sure that it's turned on to the right switches. So we're going to hit SE here and then these set on on. Oops, uh, SE set. And we'll see it's only on in the last position, but I actually want my idle up to be in the middle and the back. So I'll choose both of those. You can see that toggles that and then off. Okay, my hold is SG. Same thing. I would like both of these positions to be hold. There we go. Okay. Same thing with the function name. Um, I do tend to rename these. Um, so I tend to rename them by the RPM. Um, you can call them whatever you want. So I just hit backspace. And I know I'm probably going to run around, let's say, 1900 on this helicopter and idle up. So 1900. RPM. And that, and I'm going to rename my normal to hover.
Condition select, we're done there. Um, the only thing that I will suggest that you do now, um, you might need to adjust this later, we're gonna go into delay. Um, you do wanna group it with all your conditions. So channel six, pitch, we're gonna group. And I'm gonna change it to some number right now. We'll check it when we get it, but let's set it to 20. This delay is so if you have an offset between your idle ups um, or your hover position in your pitch curve, um, that that change won't just jolt to the next pitch setting when you're wherever your stick is. And it'll slowly increase up there. Um, if you are flying a electronic speed control that does not automatically slowly ramp between RPMs as you change them. Um, throttle could also be really useful. Okay, AFR, these are your control rates that are set by percent, not angular rate. Um, the only thing that you would use this for, generally speaking, for aileron, elevator, and rudder, um, is if you are in a gyro condition here, but you only want to toggle the expo and you don't want to change anything else. Um, in this case, what we're going to use it for is this is how you toggle between your different conditions. So I'm going to go to function. Since I've renamed it, I'm going to go to channel 11, which is condition. And I'm going to ungroup it. The single ungroup, what that means is between all these conditions we just made, which is hover, 1900, and hold, we want to have different adjustments for those. I'm going to go back to page one. Now this needs to be a flat line because you don't want, um, as you change this, we're going to assign it to a switch. And um, as you do that, uh, you want the the output pulse width to be the same across the entire span. So the quickest way to do this is to change rate A to zero, change rate B to zero, and use this offset. So all the way down, so zero percent, or negative 100 in this case, is condition one, 25 percent, or negative 50 is condition two, 0% or 50% in a 32MZ is uh, condition three, condition four, condition five, each in increments of 20%. Okay. So now what we're gonna do as I toggle through this, you can see since I set it to single, I did that for my hover. I now click into my first idle up and we'll lower this down to zero. And I'm going to make this condition two. Okay, as I toggle through there, you can now see in hover, I'm in condition one, I'm in condition two. And when I flip throttle hold, in most cases, unless you are running a different setup and you want a different set of helicopter parameters and throttle hold, um, I would suggest making your throttle hold condition uh, you, the same, the, the throttle hold condition in the driver the same as your aerobatics. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to condition two. And then when I hit hold, automatically goes there. Okay, uh, dual rate, again, this is for, it's in there, but um, you're actually gonna be doing that in the gyro. Program mixes, um, not necessarily with a fly bar or helicopter. It's in there if you ever wanna do something else, like you wanna toggle lights on with full right rudder or something in a scale helicopter or something, uh, not in your standard sport 3D FAI helicopter. Okay, the next parameter is pitch curve that we're gonna look at. Um, here what we need to do is go in, uh, by default, the uh, slider is set to adjust the neutral pitch. Uh, for most 3D applications, I don't think we need that. Um, for FAI stuff, uh, it is used, uh, or sometimes in scale applications, but for sport flying 3D, we're not. Go to the third page, you will see that the hover tuning uh, is set to on. And so we just hit that off. Now you've got a bunch of points here. 
Um, it's great because it shows you that they're there and that you can do this. However, um, we don't need all those for, for a more uh, general setup. So using these arrows down here, you can toggle between the points. They turn from green to red to whichever one you're on, and you'll see the rate value change. Remove, 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 leaving just the middle one and the end one on each side. In this case, um, this is set to single, which means that all of the pitch curves for all those conditions, the flight modes that we entered are all different. If you are the type that, that wants just the exact same pitch in everything, all you need to do is hit group, just like what we did. And now we're gonna go back and you'll see they're all copied over. Now I personally prefer not to run any negative pitch in my, in my spool up like hover mode. Um, which is a little strange um, for most. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'll show you how to do that in case you want to. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back to single. And I'm just gonna take just this low point over here, highlight it, and change the rate to zero. And then in my hover mode here, then I can just spool it up, fly it around like a helicopter, like up here hovering around. And then when I go to land, I can pull full negative and it's just going to spool down at full negative sitting on the, sitting on the ground. When I click into my idle up, then I have my full range. And in my hold, I have my full range. But by eliminating all those points first and hitting group, you copied all that work over. And so then you don't have to redo it for each condition. So pitch curve is done. Simple as that. Throttle, it's the exact same thing. We just need to go to the last page and turn off the tuning. And then I'm going to add throttle. So with, a, with an electric helicopter, um, you're just going to want to fly a line, throttle curve. Um, so actually, I go so far as to delete all of the points except uh, the two end ones. Uh, now, this is personal preference. I tend to like in normal mode. So when I'm ready to go take my helicopter off, I actually like to spool it up with the stick. Um, I know a lot of guys start their helicopter and hold, flip out, and the motor turns on. Um, show you how to do both both things here. Um, so first, delete all these extra points. Including the middle one on throttle. And then I'm going to change the rate. I know in the Scorpion ESCs, so for the pre-stored value, um, you ramp the ESC up the first time with the blades on to get the load and everything at 50%. I think Contronic is the same. Um, so I always just, when I go to take my helicopter off, um, I start it at 50%. So the first time I click out of throttle hold, bam, there you go, it's set. And then on that first flight, I use my RPTM telemetry from the CTY-760R to get my head speed set. Um, in this case now, I don't want to have to do all this work again, so I hit group. Bam, it's all copied over through all the conditions. Go back to single, and now I have full adjustability again. So in this case, I know, let's say in idle up, I know that I'm gonna run 100% throttle. So I'm gonna go offset, and bump it to 100, and then as you can see, when I toggle that, it's changing, and I know in my throttle hold, I want zero. So click into throttle hold, take my offset and go the opposite direction, all the way down to zero. If you have a speed control with an auto bailout that's triggered by throttle position, um, in this case on the Scorpions, the way it works is you just bump it up until um, the motor stays on and then bump it right back down until that threshold where it doesn't. And then when you click in and out, um, the bailout works. Um, so we'll, you'll do that in your flight tuning later, but you do that simply with that offset but as you can see, everything goes to zero, 50%, adjust your hover RPM later, then 100% and idle up, um, which of course is, is not realistic. You might, you might run somewhere around 70 to 80, depending on what your gearing is, but that'll get you your base stuff so that way you can go take off and fly. Okay, acceleration. Um, this, is, uh, this is pitch pump. 
I, I think that's what the, the common name in uh, helicopter flying is. Uh, if you want your pitch to have a boost, when you move it, you want it to move further than you. Uh, this is how you can do it. Um, said I think that, toy, that uh, term has been coined, uh, pitch pump. Uh, you have a rate for high and for low, so you could have it on just positive or just negative. Um, and obviously if you set the, the rates the same, uh, they'll be the same. Throttle hold. Um, this is used, uh, I, for, with the electrics, I tend to, to just do it the way I described. Um, you can use throttle hold here in a nitro um, using this. Um, it would be the exact same way. Um, personally, I just prefer to do it the other way. Um, but you can activate throttle hold, set it to your, to your switch. Um, and then this is actually controlling the throttle in that condition rather than just using the throttle curve. Okay, swash mixing, don't need that. Throttle mixing, we won't need that. Pitch to needle, unless you have a needle valve set up with an extra servo, won't need that. Pitch to rudder, don't need it. Gyro, this is your gyro gains. And there's two ways um, that you can do this. Uh, and it's entirely personal preference. Uh, in this case, in the default way is that per condition, there is a value. So for example, Default is 80% on the rudder. I'm going to change it to 90 just so we can see a bigger point spread. And I'm going to set my gains in a hover to 80. Actually, we'll set the tail to 80, so they're just symmetrical here. And as I click through the conditions, you'll see that the gains actually change for that rate one. Um, and in these different conditions, you can set that to different values. That is one way to do it and utilize rate one. And then say you wanted two different rates that were toggled based off condition, you could then set which rate is active by a switch. And then within that switch position, you can also have the conditions toggling in there. Um, the way that I tend to like to do it, since I only run uh, usually uh, one idle up, uh, so hover and idle up and then throttle hold, um, and then I fly the same parameters and throttle hold as my idle up, um, I actually go ahead and just assign it to a switch and then utilize rate one, two, and three um, for the different switch positions. Uh, the reason why I like to do that is just because it's all right there. I don't actually have to flip the screen, flip the, flip the condition to see what the different conditions are set to. So for gyro, for example, on rate one, I'm going to set that to SE. And the set point is the top position. And I'm going to group that. I'm going to group all these. Now that I've got rate one toggled by the switch, I'm going to go ahead and go to rate two and do the same thing. Change it from inhibit, assign it to switch SE. And I'm going to set it to these back two positions here. And as I mentioned earlier, I like to use I, actually, I, the better way to explain this, I want my throttle hold to carry whatever gains and settings that I had previously used. So if I'm in hover and I hit throttle hold, I want rate one to stay on. If I'm in idle up and I hit throttle hold, I want rate two to stay on. Um, so as you can see, that is working that way. Um, can do the exact same thing for aileron. Okay, so now when I toggle through my idle up, um, I now have all my gains visible to me. And when I hit throttle hold, it follows whatever I had previously set up. Um, what I would recommend, I would start with every single gain set to 50. Um, with what I'm recommending to you in the setup, in the CGY760R setup, taking off with your tail rotor at 50% gain and taking off with your rotor head at 50% gain uh, is a very safe value. Um, this third column here that says gyro three elevator, um, if you want, you can just go through and inhibit everything and you can turn the gains to zero. Um, 
That way, at least you just know that one's not doing anything. Group them all. And then as you change through and all you make changes, nothing is active. Next, we're going to go into governor. Um, this is for if you're using a nitro or you're using the internal governor. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're just going to set one up here now. If you are using the internal governor on your speed control, uh, basically just ignore this. Leave it all inhibited. I tend to do it. I do the exact same thing. I like to have rates. Um, you can actually adjust it. So rate one, single. Um, unit down here, um, you also want whatever RPM you're reading. So I change it to RPM. So I can say, okay, default's 1500. Um, then group, group, group. Turn on the rate assignment. I'm going to set to switch SE in this top switch position again. Same thing with this. SE, these two. And as you can see, it toggles between the two. So let's say I have 1500 set for hover and 1900 set for aerobatics. That is going to toggle between the two. You can change rate three to off if you're not using it. Um, the other way you can do it is you could leave it as single. And then as you toggle through that, your conditions are going to be changing this. So. 1600, you'll see it goes back to 1500. Um, like I said, two ways to skin that cat. I personally prefer this way. I like being able to visually see things without having to click through stuff. Okay, the next one is probably the awesomest parameter in this whole radio, and that's gyro setting. And this is what is going to get you to talk wirelessly and program your CGY760R. Other than that, your entire 16iZ is set up and is ready to go through the gyro setup and is going to be ready for its first flight.